We begin, though, with growing concerns among Democrats and some never-Trump Republicans in the wake of the CNN debates in Detroit. The candidates, they say, are risking their general election chances by taking on one another and tarnishing Barack Obama's legacy instead of focusing on defeating President Trump. President Obama is, after all, an ex-president with 95% popularity among Democrats, according to Gallup, and 65% among independents. Now, again, this is not us giving Democrats advice. This is Democrats and some Republicans giving Democrats advice, echoing President Obama, who warned about this before the campaign, the campaign even got going at a town hall in Berlin earlier this year. One of the things I do worry about sometimes uh, among progressives in the United States, maybe it's true here as well, um, is a certain kind of rigidity where we say, ah, I'm sorry, this is how it's going to be. And then we start sometimes creating what's called a uh, circular firing squad where you start shooting at your allies because one of them is straying from purity on the issues. Well, that sentiment is being echoed now. You're seen on political commentator and Democratic strategist Paul Begala earlier today. This is my problem the whole two-day debate is I believe many of these candidates seeking to win the nomination are setting themselves up to lose the presidency to Donald Trump. Well, Begala arguing that in the effort to win the primaries, Democratic candidates are moving so far left, they won't be able to win in a general election. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer also weighed in, calling Democratic squabbling over health care policy, quote, a trap that we shouldn't fall into. No circular firing squads, he added. Eric Holder, who served as attorney general under President Obama, tweeted this, to my fellow Democrats, be wary of attacking the Obama record, build on it, expand it, but there's little to be gained for you or the party by attacking a very successful and still popular Democratic president. Now, other Democrats will say that hammering out policy differences are part and parcel of any primary in either party, and there are real policy differences between Democrats, differences that candidates want to make clear so they can distinguish themselves in what is a very crowded field. The question is, can Democrats figure out a way to pick a nominee without debasing the eventual nominee or harming the credibility of the still popular former standard bearer? That remains to be seen. Some of the key moments from Detroit, especially on health care and immigration policy, show how difficult that can be. Vice President Biden, I didn't hear your response when the issue came up of all those deportations. You were Vice President of the United States. I didn't hear whether you tried to stop them or not using your power, your influence in the White House. First of all, Mr. Vice President, it looks like one of us has learned the lessons of the past and one of us hasn't. We have tried the solution of Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurance. And what have the private insurance companies done? They've sucked billions of dollars out of our health care system. I'm confused. I asked the vice president point blank, did he use his power to stop those deportations? He went right around the question. Well, Joe Biden was quick to defend President Obama today, once again, highlighting his connection to the former president and critiquing some of what he heard last night at the debate. The world has changed since Obama. And here's the deal. He changed the dialogue. He changed the whole question. He changed what was going on. And the idea that somehow it's com comparable to what this guy's doing is absolutely bizarre. Well, this guy he's referring to, of course, is President Trump. One Democrat's bizarre circular firing squad is another's critical crucible from which the strongest Democratic candidate will emerge. 